gentlemen, first weight 76 kilos category. The fight formula is three rounds of five minutes each. Attention, introducing all these sportsmen. In the red corner, he's 28. Height 172 centimeters, weight 76 kilos. PDGO submission fight by way of Adamas Jiu Jitsu. He is ADCC world champion, bronze medalist, two time world Nogi champion, three time Pan American champion, who is number one 117 division champion. He's represent GF team, Adamas Jiu Jitsu, and Manolfo team, Toledo, Ohio. Make some noise, Dante Leo. His opponent in the blue corner. Height 175 centimeter, weight in 70 kilos. He's a Chumin's freestyle wrestling master of sport. UWW Grappling World Champion, two-time UWW Grappling Asian. He's represent Battle First Team fighter from Kazakhstan. Make some noise, Nurbek Taiburi! <laughs> Referee in the mat, Damir Sadirov. Fight. All right, there we go. First match is now officially underway. In the green and gold is Dante Leon in the predominantly white rash guard representing <laughs> Battle Force <laughs> is Nurbak Talbudin. And as I was saying earlier, Brandon, about how you going up against a Kazakh grappler, maybe Dante doesn't really know too much about his opponent, but as you could hear in the introductions, a UWW World Grappling Champion, a Master of Sport in Freestyle Wrestling, which is a title that you can only achieve by being and having competed in international level wrestling tournaments. So, as you would expect from a Central Asian grappler, very skilled, but... Dante getting in on the leg early. Uses it to sweep and come up. So... Oh, well, tell us a little bit about the way the points work. Well, if we've got time for it, if Dante's slipping around towards the back, trying to get on this crucifix, switching off to the Kimura, going after the rear triangle here. This is fast work from Dante. He is wasting no time. We are oh, he's 60 stretch him. seconds into there this. Is. And there it's, is the triangle being locked up. This is going to be a wrap. Oh, he's, got, he's going to get it for sure. Side triangle, Americana pressure on the elbow and the shoulder. Somehow, somehow, oh, oh, resisted God. through that submission, but one minute and 14 seconds into the very first round of the very first match of this seven match series, Dante Leon takes the win by submission. Gave his opponent absolutely no opportunity to do anything in that match. That was a fine performance, Brandon. Well, he didn't even give us time to talk about how this thing works. Doesn't matter what the rules are if you come out and submit your guy in a minute and 14 seconds. Dante Leon, just over and over and over, he proves why he's one of the most exciting grapplers on the planet, why he's one of the most decorated guys here in this entire tournament. Dante Leon, probably my favorite guy to watch in the whole world right now. Let's take a look at the uh, replay of the, the, the submission finish. You can hear, see, you can see the, the triangle locked on from kind of a side angle, getting the arm stretched out. There's pressure going through the elbow. There's pressure going through the shoulder. That is a deeply locked submission. And of course, the Kazakh grappler had absolutely no choice. Oh, wrist lock. I didn't even see the wrist lock. Oh. Gooseneck wrist lock in Dante action on wins. top of everything else. Dante wins by wrist lock to open the show. Are you kidding me? That was absolutely spectacular work from Dante Leon. Well, we could sit here and talk all night about that match. However, we're straight on into the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee stopped this fight in the first round and third minutes, 46 seconds. After submission, call one a fighter, Red Connor, Dante Leon.
Next race, 60 kilos category. The dual formula is three rounds of five minutes each. And first, I'm inviting to the red corner, fighter from Madolfo team, Felipe Dexheimer Machado. Felipe Machado from Brazil. First time here competing in AIGA Champions League and he's looking hyped, Brandon. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. If you haven't seen Felipe Machado before, and maybe you haven't, he's coming out of Brazil. I think this guy is super excited, unorthodox. He's gonna use a lot of plays, a lot of submissions, a lot of movements that aren't really standard jujitsu. I, I mean, his rival, fighter from Adolfo team. In the blue corner, please welcome Nariman Manbaye! Next up to the mat from Battle Force, Nariman Manbaev. This match, of course, in the under 60 kilogram division. And I do wonder, Brandon, how much the hometown advantage is a factor here. This man right here is competing in front of his friends, family, training partners. And you can hear the support from the crowd. Attention and raising of the sportsman in the red corner. He's 27, height 166 centimeter, weight 60 kilos. He's a DCC Brazilian Open, Brazilian Nogi champion. He represents Pyramid Grappling Association and Madolfo team from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Felipe Dexamer Machado! He's a man in the blue corner, height 170 centimeters, weighting 60 kilos. He is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, master of sports of international class in grappling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, bronze medalist of the World Grappling Championship, UWW, world champion in grappling, Aiga. Istanbul 2021 Silver World Pro Black Belt winner 2023. He's represent Battle Force team. Fighter from Kazakhstan. Green the fighter, Nariman. Man fire. Referee in the mat, Robert Tigal. We're about to get things underway here with this second match in a seven round series. This is basically a dual meet we have. Seven matches in different weight categories with the winner of the entire series will be determined, of course, by the majority number of wins. And Felipe Machado looking to get the action down to the mat early. Oh man, nice shot. And he's already jumping out towards the back. Look at this. Oh, we might see him go to a twister here. <laughs> That's in his bag of tricks. He's already under the neck. Look at Machado. He's got it. He's going to lock it up. It's over. Felipe Machado. Official record 29 seconds for the rear naked choke submission for Felipe Machado. If Dante Leon was getting things going here quickly, well, he inspired his teammates to come out and do the same. And Felipe Machado wasted absolutely no time in getting that match done. We're at less than two minutes collective. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the referee stopped this fight in the first round and uh, four minutes, 31 seconds. After shock called, one of fighter, red corner, one, Philip Dexheimer, Machado. 29 seconds, that really is absolutely uh, spectacular finish. I mean, you can replay the whole thing. There it is, Brandon, talk us through it. Well, he started, he came out aggressive, got in there and got involved in the wrestling right away, slips around to the back, first hook goes in from standing. I thought he might go to the twister right here, something I've seen him do over and over. Decided to trade out, go all the way to the back. Look at that, he uses that shoulder hook to slide through, take the position, body triangle, under the neck, and then he puts that death squeeze on him. I told you, this kid's special, Felipe Machado. Is that, I think that's the fastest submission, I don't wanna say in Aiga history. As fast as that we've seen. But it's the fastest since any of our events that we've been here for. 
Look yeah, at that. Yeah, that was amazing. I, I, I think you're right. The way that he used that kind of looked like he was like looking for the truck entry, and it almost opened up the upper body attack, going for the neck in the process, kind of making his opponent think about the legs, and wham, he slammed in that arm around the neck, and it was over. That's one of the cool things about having the truck and the twister game as part of your arsenal. It's not, it's another way to attack the back. Like the back is controlling, you know, the traditional back control. We're controlling the back at the upper body. That truck control is controlling the back around the hips at the lower body. And to play the two back and forth, one of them is going to be open. Incredible work by Felipe Machado. Well, the strong work from Team Adolfo with two matches in, and so far they have a strong lead. And now, ladies and gentlemen, their next fight 83 kilos category. The fight formula, fight formula is three rounds of five minutes each. And the first to the red corner fighter from Manolfo team, Isaac Michel. to Michelle all the way from Australia. Something of a world traveler, a nomad, if you will, bouncing around the world. But right here, right now, in Almaty, Kazakhstan, representing Team Modolfo for the second time at the IEGA Champions League. And he was sensational the first time. He's driving to the blue corner. He's represent Battle First Team. Please welcome Magomed Charbaya. Representing Battle Force, Charbaev coming to the mat here. And I feel that the pressure is going to be on now, Absolutely. Brandon, because this is the third match in the series. Modolfo with a strong lead of 2-0. I imagine that there will be uh, some urgency in, on the on the side and of the Battle Force team. The sportsman in the blue corner, he is 25, height 170, weight 83 kilos. He's no gi world champion, brown belt. Who is next champion? ADCC Trails champion. 99 and 8 DCC Trails champion, 88, who ranking number four. He represents Club Vanguard and Madolfo team. He's from Australia. Make some noise, Isaac Misha. His opponent in the blue corner, he's 29. He's 170 centimeters weight in 83 kilos. He's master of sports in freestyle wrestling. World champion of Rio Europe in UWW. Silver medalist of the ADCC European Championship. ACB world champion, no gi and gi among black belts. Champion of Russia, UWW, ADCC, ABC, and Nevada. He's represent battle first team. Waiting from Dagestan, Bakhachkala. Give it up to Magomed Charbaya! Reverie in the mud, Robert Diggle. Okay, introductions are over and we're about to begin this third match here. As you can see, Isaac Michal in the green and gold. Australian colors, by the way, going up against Battle Forces. Magomed Jabayev. And you gotta wonder if there's a little bit of intimidation factor on the side of Team Modolfo here. They've come out and just run over the first two opponents. And things are not getting easier when Isaac Michelle steps out. No, definitely not. However, I would say that I kind of, I'm not gonna hedge my bets, but I'm gonna pretty say, I'm gonna say here that I feel like Isaac's gonna take a little bit more time. He's not known as like a quick finisher. He's a slower starter and also, Man, Isaac likes to wrestle, and I feel that he is going to enjoy the challenge of going up against a Central Asian grappler and testing his wrestling skills against Jarbaev. I mean, it took him an hour to list Jarbaev's 
credentials at the beginning. So, yeah, they're going head to head here. Isaac playing on that collar tie. Isaac Michel, you mentioned it earlier, Brandon, about how he had such a good showing at the last Aiga Champions League. Why don't you talk a little bit about that for us? Tell the viewers what he did. Well, the the main thing that was so impressive from him is the showing that he had against Joseph Chen. Chen, of course, has become a international superstar oh, in up. a time since, winning the trials. But Isaac made him look. Let's. I mean, I. Joseph had one good offensive movement against him in the entire matchup. But Isaac really made him look human. And considering what Joseph has done since, it, it makes Isaac's performance against him even more sensational. Since then, of course, Isaac has once again qualified for the ADCC World Championships. He picked up his, uh, or he confirmed his place in that tournament just in the last couple of weeks with a gold medal at the Asia and Oceania trials in Singapore, so he'll be going back to ADCC. But now, we're seconds away from entering the points period. We haven't even had a chance to talk about it yet, Brandon, but these matches are three five-minute rounds. The first two minutes of the rounds, there are no points are active except for takedowns. Takedowns can score at any point during the match. But kind of like you may have seen in ADCC, the initial part of the match if you were to secure the back, if you were to get the mount or something, no points would be awarded. But now, the three-minute mark, or the two-minute mark of the match, three-minute remaining, has been hit. So points are awarded. And now, takedowns will score on any jujitsu position that you're familiar with. Guard passes, back control, oh, mount, etc. will also ahead. score. Now, the way that the rounds work, it's basically best out of three. If it's one round to me, one round to you, well, whoever wins that third round wins the match overall. But of course, a submission can end, as we've seen, can end it at any time, whether in the first round or the final round. I, gotta I tell hope that's you, clear. Man, I, I love this rule set. Whether you agree with how it's done or not, it's yeah, unique it and it, it forces engagement. I like these five minute, I like that they're breaking it up into five minute sections. Just keeps everybody moving quick. Keeps the action fast. Yeah, they can go hard for five, get a minute to recover, and then go again. It's very much like an MMA fight in that respect. Not pacing themselves for a 10, 15, 20 minute match. Oh, look oh. at that reverse shot. That was very interesting attack there. I mean, well recognized and defended by Jabayev. He didn't really let Isaac get too deep on that. But that's the first significant takedown attempt we've seen. Jabayev has not actually oh, look attacked that yet. Slide by. Isaac gets into the body lock, starts to put him down. Already moving around towards the back, tries to throw the first hook. Now that's going to be a two-point takedown. You can see the two on the board here at Aiga. A takedown, two turtle does score. Yeah, if it's a clean takedown, of course, that is kind of four points. That's really the only difference in the scoring as to ADCC is they do score the takedowns a lot quicker here. But as far as what actions result in points and how many points they award, pretty much the same score. Look at that claw up on the neck. Isaac is a really big fan of those claw grips, like a meat hook. He just puts it on the, the shoulder there. That amazing movement there by Isaac and just tailing his opponent wherever Jarbaev was going. He gets to that back. He's stuck on it, Brandon. Yeah, but Jarbaev doing a really good job of shutting Isaac out from a real score, like a, a scoring position. I know we got the points for the takedown already, but he hasn't allowed him to advance from here. Jarbaev doing a good job fighting. Oh, stepping over for the arm lock, missed it. Wow, that was a very interesting attack there from Isaac Michel going high up and over the back. And I think that was smart as well because, you know, it was the final 30 seconds. He could afford to take a risk like that, knowing that it would have been hard for Jarbaev to score on him in the remainder of this match, or this round, excuse me. Looks for the duck. Jarbaev jumps on his head. All right, there we go. So round one in the books for Isaac Michel, four points. And as I said, I predicted that Isaac would come out and test his wrestling. However, I do wonder, now he's got it out of his system, will we see a different strategy for round two? I don't think so. I think we're going to see him come out and try to assert his will with the wrestling. I bet we're going to see this slide by to the body lock here. 
There it is. Yeah, he got a side body lock and there was a deep wizard trying to block the path, but he found his way around and I mean, once he got that back, he was hanging on to it. Saul Jarbaev tried to reach through for the victor roll like he was going to roll to the knee bar. Isaac does a great job just staying connected, following the movement. And that's what scored in the second two, because that whole transition right there, they came back up, they were considered to be wrestling again. So when Jarbaev returned to the mat to the turtle position, that's what scored Isaac the second two points. But the armbar entry was pretty cool too, right? Yeah. And now after the first round, one red corner. Well, so far this match is longer than the previous two combined. <laughs> By double. <laughs> you can see in the, just on the left of screen there, in the corner was ADCC head organizer Mo Jassim and team captain Giancarlo Bodoni. Flanked by him is Melky Galvao. Mo really put together a superstar team for this, uh, for this event, huh? He called out the big guns. He did. And he's got a whole lineup of killers still ready to take the stage. It's like everybody that they send out, I mean, they, they came to win the money. Let's just say that. <laughs> Yeah, see the change in strategy. Yeah, Isaac Michel can pull guard without penalty and uh, did so early in this round. But he already knows he can out-wrestle him. Yeah, I think, and I think he just hinted towards it here. I think we're going to see him try to wrestle up from this position. Look, take it. There he goes. Take a grip on the head. Yeah, try High to build stop. height. Maybe come up and, and wrestle up instead of trying to sweep because you can see that Jabayev is cagey here, right? He's not entering. And I'm wondering, yep, the, as I was saying, I'm wondering if there's going to be a, a potential warning from our referee, and that's exactly what happened. Jabayev is not advancing. And as you know, Brandon, you just can't win a match going backwards like this. You can't win the hearts of the people going backwards either. That's the view from the Battle Force corner. And Isaac being patient as well, not chasing Jabayev. He, he knows that he for, if he tries to shoot him for a leg here, Jabayev will potentially, you know, wrap up a neck. But there's a penalty, or stalling, stalling court, sta excuse me, stalling clock has been started against Jabayev. He's got 20 seconds to work when that stalling warning has been initiated. If he doesn't do anything in those 20 seconds, he will be hit with a penalty. And that's exactly what's just happened. Penalty against Jabayev in blue. And Isaac uses this opportunity to wrestle back up. Jabayev looks to his corner. Seemingly looking for advice. They go head to head. Isaac returns to the feet. Curious. I've just looked at the scoreboard, and Michelle has a penalty against him as well. I mean, I, I think that's reasonably fair, to be honest with you. I mean, it's not like he was down there pushing the pace from the from his butt either. However, he didn't get a stalling call against him. Maybe you know. Kind of curious to, that that penalty came out of nowhere, but... Maybe we missed it. We'll ask the referees we'll, later. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. We missed it. That's, I'm going to say I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> just over two minutes remaining in this second round. Ooh, that was a nice little snap there from Jabayev. Caught, caught Michel coming forward. A little bit too much uh, weight on his front foot. Jabayev got his back against the wall here. He has to win this round. Yeah, I mean, it could potentially end a draw, and if that's the case, you know, he oh, still has true. the uh, yeah, he still has the the, the third round to, to win this. But uh, we have yet to see a significant offensive move from Jabayev. I was going to just say he really hasn't shown us any potential to be able to win the match. There's a move oh, just as soon as I say that. it. Lovely arm drag. He's got the. The arm over the trap as well. That's interesting defense there from uh, Michelle. He's um, oh, nice little knee tap from the back there. Jabayev not rushing to jump to the back, put the seatbelt on. Very reminiscent of the way that that Michelle was controlling from the back in the in the first round. 
Nice use of those knee tap from the back to try and kick out the legs. Oh, good reset by Michel, though. Yeah, Jarbayev just wasn't able to get his hands locked together. So as soon as he went to adjust the position, Isaac made his move and turned out. Jarbayev was kind of calling yeah, Michel to shoot him for on. a second then. Yeah, he's kind of like, come on, let's see what you got, let's wrestle. Jabai have taken a look at the clock there. With 20 seconds remaining in this round. I wonder if we'll see one last offensive move from either of them. Yeah, we can see the feints and the level changes, but I can imagine, man, shooting on either one of these guys is probably like running into a brick wall. Here's the shot. Whoa! Oh, he put him down. He did put him down. He didn't establish position, but four seconds left. I mean, they were very close to going off the stage there at that point. Ooh, I think he could have stayed with that and probably scored it. But End what of the match? What he does do is he shows that he has the potential to score. That's, that's a gonna statement. Be, that's that's going to be huge coming into this third round because, like you said, this one ends in a draw. And Jabayev, I think he's like, yeah, you know, he kind of wrestled me a little bit in that first round. But that was him saying, you know, Let's not forget, I can wrestle too. I'm still in this. So, big takedown right in the end in the last 10 seconds. No scoring remover, but... It could have been, though. It could have been a scoring play. I he just needed to stay with it. I know they were over towards the edge of the mat, and so he kind of let him go, but he didn't end up running off the mat. He probably should have just chased him all the way down. Interesting that Melky Galvao speaking in Portuguese, and Giancarlo, oh, that was a beautiful blast double. Melky Galvao speaking in Portuguese, and Giancarlo Bordoni was translating in the corner. So you have three coaches in effect talking to Michelle, but look at that. That forward momentum. I really thought Michelle was going to end up in front row right there. Yeah, he almost ate that camera. The next final round. All right, it's all down to this now. If Jabayev can score, then it's a draw. Because it's one round apiece and a, and a draw in the second round. That means that we would go to a judge's decision. If Michel can score in this round, he takes the entire match. But of course, a submission can win either way at any point. Jabayev, more eager to engage the guard this time. And I think, I can't say for certain, but I do think I heard Melky Galvao and Bodoni saying something about entering the legs when they were over there mm. in the corner between rounds. So I'm wondering, you know, this is a very different guard posture as well from Michel. He's yeah. on his back, supine guard as they like to call it. He's not sat up and looking to build height and wrestle. It's almost like you said, he's, he's trying to draw him in. in. Yeah with possibly the strategy of tangling up a leg and going for a submission. Back into his original guard posture, though. Looking to high stop. This is a different shot I have, though. Compared to the first and second round, Ooh, there's, there's the, entry. the entry. Hold the foot by the look of it, but... Not really a significant entanglement. Not yet, but this is how it starts here. Nice job. Good navigation of the leg entanglement by Sharbayev. Yeah, it's a solid reset. Really wasn't in danger there, but could tell that he was on unsteady ground and he was sinking fast. So smart move to disengage him. But, like we said, different job by straight back in. He's actually engaged. There's contact in this guard position, and we didn't really see that from him at all in the first, in the second round. Yeah, but even when he comes in and engages, he keeps those hips low and back, really shutting off the leg attack potential for Isaac. All right, you heard the call. There's points awarded now, so two minutes into this third and final round, points will be active. That means sweeps, score, guard passes, score. Control positions and pins, score.
Nice job of unbalancing Jabayev there. Jabayev hooks the ankle. I'm wondering if that's smart. You want to go in a leg lock shootout with Isaac Michel? Not so sure, but... Isaac with a death clutch around that shin, not leaving him much choice. And Isaac looking to use his head to control the toes. I do like this posture though from Jabayev. You know, it's, uh, it's a low posture, it's a forward pressure with the knee. Doesn't really give Michel that much in the way of uh, opportunity to attack, but. Oh, gets into the double unders, turns oh. the corner. Forcing Michel to recover and get back to his guard pretty hard there. That was decent forward pressure for the pass. Kind of ran out of space, even on this giant map that we have in front of us here. They ran out of space. Isaac jumps in, butter half, minute 30 to go. Yeah, 0-0. Zero, zero. Getting into the final 70 seconds or so now of this match. A little more urgency from the Battle Force representative. Knee through the middle by Jarbaev. Isaac reaching through, gripping the leg with the right hand, and there he goes locking around the calf again. I thought he was going to look and scoop under the leg Ooh. and go for a cake guard, but there was absolutely no space. Jarbaev had that door firmly shut. Maybe not most exciting strategy from the Russian, but Jabayev is, um, he's proving to be a much tougher customer than maybe Michelle expected. Oh, nice hip switch. Almost gets through. Looking around to the side, he's got Less than 15 seconds now. Very difficult to secure a pin in and hold Michelle down for a full three seconds to score at this point in the match. But he's still trying, still going forward, still showing intent. And that is the end of the rounds. Wow, wow. Very different second and third rounds to the first. It's almost like three very different matches, and that's kind of how things play out here at Universal Fight. Yeah, I, I think that's what they want. Champions League. I think that's what they want. They want to see. It gives you an opportunity to play three different styles. You know, and we really saw that from Isaac. Came out wrestling heavy in round one. Came out in round two, playing with that seated guard. Round three with his supine guard. All right, here we go for the official decision. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this fight lasted for all three rounds. Won this fight on points. Fighter in the red corner, Isaac Michel from Madolfo team. After winning the first round on points, the second and third rounds were draws. But that means Isaac Michel takes the overall victory as a result. And here's a look at the uh, some of the action from the very first round. Big explosive wrestling exchange there from Isaac Michel. Oh, shame we don't get to see a little more of that match. But we're straight on into the straight through the, the action here now. It's it's really about getting things going here at Aiga Champions League final. And next up is a 70 kilogram match with Sayokan Bolatbek of Battle Force going up against Gabriel Souza of Team Adolfo. The next bout 17 kilos category. The fight formula is three rounds of five minutes each. And first I am inviting to the red corner, fighter from Madolfo team, please welcome Gabriel Souza! 
Returning to the AIGA Champions League here in Amati, Kazakhstan, it's Gabriel Souza. ADCC silver medalists. And for me, one of the standout grapplers, competitors from the, the previous Team Adolfo show at AIGA Champions League. Yeah, he's an incredibly exciting fighter. Very versatile as well. He can, he can really play the game at every level. Plays well on the feet. Beautiful guard passing. Excellent guard. Great leg locker. He's the man in the blue corner. He's represent Battle First Team. Please welcome Poland Big Stejnka. Only 18 years of age is Salkan Bolatbek and Gabriel Souza is not exactly uh, <laughs> an old man himself still very much a young man in his 20s however I kind of feel that this is your classic up-and-comer going up against an established veteran in this match and with his back against the wall attention introducing all the sportsmen in the red corner he's 26 Height 166 centimeters, weight 70 kilos. He is essential Jiu Jitsu. Second place ADCC 2022. World Pro Champion, Nogi European Champion. He is represent Madolfo team. He is from Fortaleza. Greet the fighter, Gabriel Souza. His opponent in the blue corner, height 185 centimeter, weight in 70 kilos. He's purple bait, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Asian grappling champion, world grappling championship medalist. He's representing KTT and battle first team at the tournament. Fighter from Kazakhstan, make some noise. Bullet bag, stay So this is it, Brandon. This match is a pivotal moment here in this series because Round so one. far, Team Adolfo are 3-0 in this seven-match series. And if Gabriel Souza wins this match, Team it's Adolfo over. are done. They're over, they're through into their next round. And every match after that will just be about pride rather than about getting through into the final. And Souza is a very, very aggressive, plays hard. Yeah, he's very physical, he's very intense. And he's a finisher as well, you know? He can put the pressure on his opponents and he can get the tap, but... Well, you can see Souza is actually kind of complaining a bit to the referee about Silkan Bolotbeck getting a bit handsy there with the, the pushes on the face and the head. This is not combat jiu-jitsu, Brandon. Not this one. But, you know, I, I like that from Bolat Beck. I mean, he's a, not only is his team with their back against the wall, but he's got a lot to prove. Like you said, he's the young man coming out here trying to take on an ADCC silver medalist. You've got to come out and show this guy that you're not afraid of him. You will get in there and engage. And if he screws around, you're going to hurt him. He's an 18-year-old purple belt. He's got absolutely nothing to lose on like a personal level, but of course he is carrying so much weight, so much pressure from his team, from his, from his teammates, from his country, everything. Another push on the face. And I think that's actually, actually, you know, you hit the nail on the head that he shouldn't show any respect really to Gabriel Souza, even knowing that he's an ADCC silver medalist, even knowing how well he performed at the previous edition of the AIGA. You can't. No. You can't. You got to come out there with the spirit of a, of a warrior. Although he did receive a warning there from the referee that he needs to engage. Yeah, he's got to come out here. He's got to attack Gabriel. Gabriel, you saw him appeal to the referee like, he's going backwards. What do you want me to do? Okay, they're starting the stalling clock against, against Bola Beck. He's got 20 seconds to do something significant. If he doesn't, he will get hit with a penalty. Looked to his corner for just a split second. Ends up getting turned for it. And that happened after the, yep, that's going to be his scoring position. Yeah, yeah. 
just just after they called the points. It was just a, a few seconds after that arm drag. I feel like Gabriel Souza, he timed that arm drag. Yeah, I he, think he was, you're right. He was watching the clock. Well, he's such a savvy competitor. Look at this. Dragging him down into the guard here. Trying to crush his ribs. Just anything he can to hold on. Stop Souza from getting away from him. Yeah, Gabriel Souza, I feel like in his weight class, he's got some of the best guard passing in the world. Absolutely. And if I was Bollockbeck, I would hang on for dear life as well. I would not want to give him any space to start moving. I mean, it's an interesting approach. Look how strong Souza's posture is, too. Just his, his fundamentals of being able to hold this young man up off of the floor with without wearing himself out yeah he's strong carrying through his, the hips strong through the posture in the back and the neck he's carrying his full body weight in effect what is a stress position here and yet doesn't seem phased by the fact he's got a fully grown human locked around his waist and off the mat but yeah and the length of okay i was going to say the length was giving him a little bit of a problem there on opening the guard and now sosa is going to change sides look at that here he comes work. with this rumble passing he loves passing directly to north south he's so good at passing and cutting an angle going all the way around getting to that top position it's kind of the way you got to play it in no gi these days against these high like these highly skilled guards at the top of the food chain but you're right, though, the length of Bolopek is definitely oh. a factor here. And look at that. Looking for the sweep. Hey, Sousa better keep, he better mind his P's and Q's. And now he wants to start moving around to this north-south position. Yeah, that length and the flexibility from Bolopek is definitely a, a, a factor here. He's, uh, his legs are kind of everywhere here, but Gabriel Sousa almost beating that inside leg. Oh, and there it is again, getting in underneath. There he goes, all the way around to north-south. Beautiful pass. He's got to shut these legs out oh, of the north south recovery. Yeah, it just didn't solidify. But he was right there. Really what well, I mean that was a that was a whisker away from being a three-point guard pass right there. He was so close. You have to establish the, the pin for three seconds to be able to score. And it was like two and three quarters right there. <laughs> Pull it back with that long guard, flexible, the guard of a young man. Given Souza, I, I don't want to say it's given him trouble, but it's kept him from passing so far. Yes, it has. I mean, Gabriel Souza came very close, but so far that uh, that guard has proved a, a tricky puzzle to solve. But Gabriel Souza gets that first round by points. And we'll see if there's any change of strategy on it. Well, either side of it. Let's see if we get a replay of any action. You gotta come out. You gotta come out hard hitting here. I think we're gonna get a look at the sweep. Oh, oh no. actually no, that was oh. the, the, Let's call it aggressive hand fighting. I'd just call it a slap across the mouth. Let's call it what it is. Okay, that one. Yeah, that was pretty forceful. You can see actually Felipe Machado in the corner of the golf there. Even he was like, hey, what's going on here? That With arm, the arm drag. drag. I almost thought that uh, that Silkan was going to kind of reverse that arm drag and match Gabriel Souza with one of his own, but... Well, Souza did a great job following the position. He touched his back to the mat for Round just a second, two. but followed it all the way through. Yeah, I mean, once he gets on top, it's so hard to, uh, to destabilize and to get back, put him back on bottom. But we saw some moments there <laughs> when Bollockback was using his legs and was... Uh, destabilizing Sosa and comes that arm drag yeah came close to getting a couple of sweeps in the in the in the first round but Sosa straight back to pulling guard Ooh, that's interesting he's aggressive. Well, look at the stomp pass yeah he smacked Sosa in the head again to open up and Sosa gave a sly little look over to the referee like yeah we really gonna do, have to do this that's one thing you can say about about 
38-year-old Russian, about the, the Kazakh, the Central Asian grapplers in general. They are intense. They're physical, you know, and it's uh, it can catch some guys a little bit by surprise. Oh, that's Sosa's game, though. Physical and intense. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he's uh, he's been there before. It's uh, it's definitely his style. It won't phase him. But we certainly see it you know, play out in the past, putting some pressure on people. Just the sheer physicality sometimes has uh, caught them by surprise. And they've wilted under that pressure. But Sosa again looking for that arm drag. Almost looked like Polopek was ready to concede position because he knows he won't actually get scored on. Yeah, and it looked like Souza decided not to come up with that as well. For that reason, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Just knew it wasn't really worth the effort because there's no points yet. But with 20 seconds away from the points being called, and oh. goes to his guard. Oh, what is this? <laughs> They both get a stalling penalty, the stalling clock turned on. I think Bolopek knew that... Bolopek knew that Gabriel Souza was going to try and score with the sweep at the points, uh, as the points were called. And he's like, no, I'm not going to give the guy any points. I want to play guard, but I want to do it on my terms. Yeah, and I like it. Strategic by the young man. So look at this pass. Oh, God, that was gorgeous. Beats an in, inside knee. Hip control, runs around. Top spin to the back. No hooks. However, going for the Kimura grip, trying to go for the... Possibly, I thought he might look for the side triangle from the top, the Yoko Sankaku, but nice recovery there from Bolotbeck. Can you believe it, Brandon? Shuts him out of the score. All that work and no point scored for Gabriel Souza. Gabriel Souza now kind of camping out in that knee cup position, just taking a little look at the clock, calculate how much time is left in this second round. And I like the way that he's constantly stripping that kind of top leg. This you know, this is here. full sweep territory, so he was getting dealing with that ankle. But this is a little bit better actually for Bolopek. Bolopek very dexterous with his guard, flexible, able to put his legs where he wants them. Still working on this false reap. Bails on it. Yeah, this bails on it, and this is a little bit better now for Gabriel Souza because he's getting dangerously close to making chest to chest contact. He's digging in from the cross face for the underhook. Yeah, but that long frame on the left side of, of the legs for Bullet back to, oh, headbutt on the way in by Souza. One thing I've noticed about Bolobek, even though he has a very long guard, uh, long legs, doesn't play a long-range guard as such. He's got a good knee shield at all times. He's kind of using that to uh, keep Gabriel Souza at bay when he kind of tries to come forward with pressure. Look at this. Getting a little bit of a tangle going. Souza navigates it, controls the leg. Here's the underhook off the bottom by Bolobek. And the body lock. Double unders, scoring potential. Is he going to try and wrestle up with this body lock position? Looks like it. And Gabriel Souza may be aware of that. Adjust his position accordingly. Molebek got to a good position here, but he's running out of time. Probably not going to end up scoring with it. He's oh, going to go for back these to that squeeze. Again. Well, Brandon, that was a very different second round. Yeah, it was. Well, a bit, made it a couple of nice plays there. I mean, he got into that double under position. That was potential scoring world right there for him. So solid base, though, from Gabriel Souza in dealing with those. Uh, I mean, that double underhook and the and the butterfly guard, a really classic kind of sweeping position. You come up and hit the body lock reversal, but 
really solid base. I mean, this is the earlier phase of the match where Sozu was playing a little bit of guard. It didn't last too long. There's that stall, but I mean, what was that? A better look at the guard pass from uh, Gabriel Souza trying to come around at the top position. This is the latter part of that sequence with the top spin through to the near back control, but the ball effect with showed some really good resilience in that sequence and that tricky guard is giving Gabriel Souza some problems now in this match. And I wonder how good that is for Bolotbeck, you know, basically he lost the first round, second round was a draw. So this third round, there's still a chance to win this. And I'm wondering if that's actually, you know, at the deeper he's got into round this match. Round three, final round. Especially after the second round where, where Souza wasn't able to pass, if Bolotbeck's thinking, you know what, hey, I can do this. Souza so opting to wrestle and Bolotbeck pulls guard. Oh, look at this. Big mistake, though. Exposes the back early. A little bit of a lazy guard pull, you could possibly oh, say. He's, he's going to get that. Oh, he's got it completely locked out. Oh, he has smashed it. Oh, he's in on the pull. How is Bolotbeck not out. tapping to that? Comes up on top. He's going to try and rip that arm out. The crowd going wild. How did he survive oh, that oh, oh, oh. Dude, what an aggressive play on the elbow by Souza. Souza looked ready to break it. I mean, he tried to break it for sure. Those adolescent joints definitely got a little bit more flex to them. And I think Bolotbeck was taken to the limit there in that arm bar attack. But Gabriel Souza. Totally different compared to the first two rounds. Came out far, came out fast, came out hard. A minute into that match, the first real submission attempt, in, sorry, the first minute of this round, the first real submission attack in the entire match. Bolabak, well, he's gonna have to be careful now because Gabriel Souza, it's pretty obvious, he's like, he's done playing around now. He wants to get this match done for Team Adolfo and move through into the finals. Souza needs to start stepping around and forcing that north-south. That's when he's done his, oh, that's a nice. Shucks the arm, gets to the underhook, but look at this. Flat back now with the underhook. This is bad news for Bulletbeck. He's beat the inside leg. He's got really good control of the upper body. It's, he's got the uh, body lock basically with an arm inside as well, but he's got a really good grip around the torso. Oh, he's he's going to cook him right here. Bullet back, going to go to the lockdown. Now points are active, so if Gabriel Souza completes this sequence, he will score. Doesn't have the double unders anymore. It's actually interesting. Bolotbeck has managed to recover the the far side underhook. Yeah, he's got the he's got the important underhook in this position, but he's flat on his back, playing the lockdown. And he's given he's given Gabriel a little bit of problem with that lockdown. You see, he's pitching him over to the far side. Souza climbing higher, going forward. There he goes. That. Trap leg still not free and wow Bolotbeck managed to, to manages to hold him off back into this longer range position now. Man, that was a lot of work from Gabriel Souza. You don't see him get stuck there that often. He has a great utilization of the lockdown. To, and that's one of the best uses of the lockdown. Save yourself from these deep half guard passes, these chest to chest positions which are usually a death sentence. Hasn't taken the pressure off though, has he, Gabriel no. Souza? He's still going forward, but look at that, building height, heisting up was Bolotbeck. Now inverting, playing with that this, shield. I don't think this is a great strategy from Bolotbeck. This is where uh, Gabriel Souza is so good at passing from. And just drop down or into the north side or possibly take the back. But he's doing a good job of keeping his knees on the inside. 
Yes, he is right onto the edge of bounds. I don't think they're going to be able to recover, uh, re recreate that position. So it'll probably just be neutral restart from the guard. Yep. Oh, there goes Souza working around towards the north south. He's got what he wants. Oh, the dive into the knee cut. That was amazing. Long range passing. Cuts back in the other direction that he came from. Drops into the knee cut. Really nice use. Cupping the inside elbow. He's got two knees He's on He's going to take the back. Still hasn't scored, though. Still hasn't scored. Butterfly score. hook is back in. He pulls him out of the guard pass. Incredible late guard recovery there from the Kazakh grappler. Going with the rear naked choke grip around the leg for this false reap attempt. Gets an elevation, gets that foot through. Whoa! All the way through, but does he have the time to finish this? Can he sweep with it? Lost the opportunity for the leg attack, the submission. Still desperately trying to draw him in, but Gabriel Souza holds him off. Second round in this match to go to a draw. I can't believe the Gabriel Souza. Gabriel Souza has managed to score in the first round, but the second two both aimed at his draw. Souza takes the overall victory. The all important fourth match for Team Adolfo, but what a showing by Bolivar. Yeah, the young man coming and now, out. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight lasted for uh, three rounds. Won this fight by points. Fighter on in the red corner, Isaac Michel. Gabriel Souza. Excuse me. Well, Gabriel Souza is shaking his me. head as he walks off the mat back to his corner, even though getting the victory, even though punching the ticket for Team Adolfo going to the final. Uh, real look of frustration on his face there. And his teammates are actually saying, hey, don't worry about it. His job is done. We're good. Zero in favor of the model for team. So that's it, Brian. As we watch the replay here, we can just remind it. The viewers, the team Adolfo will move through into the final to be held tomorrow against the winners of uh, the next match series, which will be SAE Republic and Universal Fighters. Now that we do still have three matches to come in this series between Battle Force and Team Adolfo. The result overall is set, but these matches, there's still a lot on the line here. And every, every match will, of course, be significant in its own way because, hey, there's pride and honor on the line here as well. Yeah, and we're about to see a potentially one of the most exciting matches of the whole weekend. Big Dan Montessoyu coming against Puya Rahmani. Puya, one of the most intimidating looking guys. Oh my God, look at that arm lock. I don't know how he survived that, really don't. Incredible resilience there from the 18-year-old Purple Belt. Possibly a future star from the world of Kazakh grappling. Definitely keep an eye on that kid. You know, Souza had his head hung low, but really all of the offense was his throughout. You know, he may not have gotten the points on the board that he wanted. Uh, 91 kilos. This fight formula is three rounds of five minutes each. I'm inviting to the red corner fighter he represent model for team. Please welcome Daniel Manasso. Big Dan Manasso walks to the mat here, representing Team Adolfo, the Aiga debut for this, well, call it what it is, a rising star in the world of no-gi grappling. An extremely intimidating, physical, and technical grappler. To the blue corner, he represents Battle First Team, Puya 
Rahmani. And hailing from Iran, the 31-year-old wrestler, jiu-jitsu fighter, MMA fighter, and all-round fearsome-looking dude. Yeah, that's an intimidating-looking guy. We have a real clash of titans here in this heavyweight match. Two of the biggest competitors in the entire Champions League finals. In the red corner, he's 22, high 200 centimeters, weight 99 kilos plus. He's new wave jiu-jitsu, 10-time ADCC Open, three-time UFC past Invitational. He represents Madolfa team. He's from Austin, Texas. Make some noise. Daniel Mandasso! His opponent in the blue corner. Height 190 centimeter, weight in 91 kilos plus. He's brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, two time wrestling world champion, and two time AC BGG world champion. He represents Battle Force team, fighter from Kazakhstan. Make some noise! Puya Rahmani! Hi, Brandon, what Referee in the, the match, Damian Sutter. We already know that this result here won't count towards the overall showdown between Team Adolfo and Battle Force, but doesn't matter. I want to see these big guys <laughs> back. <laughs> Round one. And look at this. This is something you don't expect when you see a guy like Big Dan, but he is a guard player. You know, you, people talk about how big he is. It's, uh, that's always the storyline with him. Oh, he's big. He's huge. But he's a technically smooth player, and he prefers his guard, and he does his best work from his guard. Uh, warning there from uh, the referee about the palm in the palm head. Palm strikes, shall we call it? The aggressive hand fighting. Very yeah, physical, side, really, side. really strong Don't wrestling pedigree for Romani. He's a uh, champion in uh, a number of rather unusual styles, but oh, we saw Manasoyu trying to use that really. He's got such a great Uchimata. Yeah, Bill height and hit that wizard, tried to kick it up, but it's going to be say, hard to do it against Puglia. Well, Romani has a really, really strong wrestling pedigree, as you would expect from an Iranian, but in unusual and, you know, the more esoteric styles of wrestling, like traditional Kushti in India, which is held in like a giant dirt pit, you know, just in an open field. He's a beach wrestling champion, which is held literally in sand. So, competing in... Uh, Oh, we got a little bit of a... Uh, it looks like a blood stoppage, but that mark was already on Daniel Manasoyo's face. It's yeah. uh, an existing war with battle wound, shall we call it. Yeah, he got that the other night in his match against Victor Hugo. I was there commentating that oh, match yeah. as well. Stalling. Stalling start. So the right. stalling yeah. clock Oof. is on. Yeah, I can hear a slap from that hand action, fighting right action. here. Rachmani keeping his hips low, keeping yeah, his hips yeah. back. Stand up, stand up. He's yeah. going to hit it with a stalling penalty here. I really feel like Mansoy is going to have a very hard time in trying to build height and out-wrestle uh, Ramani here. You know, yes. whatever it is, whether it's coming up and trying to grab hold of a neck, whether it's trying to come up and trying to wrestle him back down with a whiz kick like he did earlier. But, well, Ramani's already been hit with a penalty for not engaging, and I feel like if he keeps up this strategy... One. He's going to have to take some risk. Well, what would you do if you were Ramani in this position, Brandon? Because let's, let's call it what it is, man. I would not want to run headfirst into Dan Manasoyu's guard either. Well, if if Big Dan continues to, to I guess, pretend to wrestle up like that, I might try to draw him into a wrestle up and try to win that engagement. The stalling clock is on again. Ramani chooses to come back to his feet and then back down, hips low again. Get a look over Mo's shoulder here. Yeah, go, go, go. Right to five. He's on the clock. Well, that's going to be the second stalling penalty against Puya Ramani. And we're only just over halfway through this first five-minute round. 
Yeah, we're just barely into the points yeah, period go. here. Try to pass. Yeah, try to pass. Go, go. Try to pass the guard. To the side, to the side. Yeah. And you can hear the corner yeah. for Rachmani yeah, telling him to try to pass the guard. Get in there and try to pass. Okay, two minutes. Yeah, go. Go, pass. Big Dan getting into his half guard here. Gets those legs closed around the half. But every time he goes into his butterfly game, Rachmani is just going to use that to disengage. Try to pass his guard. Yeah, go. Stalling again. Man. Try to pass his guard. Go. Try to pass. Go, go, go. Turning that stalling clock go, back on. Pass. And let's sit straight. I mean, with yeah, good yeah, reason. Good. Uh, go. Whether that is again, worth uh, taking go, it back, you know, that little pass attempt right there. But no, yeah, definitely not. Stalling. Go. Yep, third penalty is awarded against Romani, and I wonder at what point they uh, <laughs> they going go into the shoulder crunch. Yeah, go. And that's going to give him the nice. movement that he needs. That Almost. play back and forth. You know, if if Romani's going to hide the legs from him, then he's going to expose the shoulders. And vice versa. Exactly. So when Dan goes to that, he can't get to the legs. Oh, here's a body lock attempt. But if he can't get to the legs. Then he's going to go to the shoulders, and then when Rachmani tries to disengage go, go. from the shoulder crunch or the upper body clinch, oh, yeah. it's going to open the exposure yeah, on the go, hips go. again, which is the play that we just saw. Big Dan going to the two go on the one. Yeah, it's going to be go so to hard to hand to fight against somebody like Rachmani, though, from from this position. I mean, imagine trying to pass that arm across the center line is just not going to happen against a guy with such a strong wrestling pedigree. How do you even get in on a guy like this? Like you said, you know, playing between the upper and the lower body, but with such a defensive posture and lack of forward motion from Ramani, real committal to passing the guard. Manasoyo is just having to hang out here and hope that Ramani actually engages. Well, you just hope he doesn't, <laughs> that he doesn't make any mistakes. Big Dan really showing no signs that he's going to have anything to worry about from Rogmani so far, to be honest with you. rogmani has got to go back to his corner and come up with some kind of new strategy coming out for round two because if he comes out and plays with the same game, I mean, he's just going to lose the entire matchup After on the first round, one red corner. Would love to have heard what was going on in the corner there on both sides, actually. But here's a little look at the aggressive hand fighting from uh, Ramani getting the warning. If I'm in Big Dan's corner, I'm going to tell him to do the exact same thing. That's obviously, it's a winning strategy. It's not an exciting strategy. Man, there's not many people who can just shut down Big Dan Zushimada like that. But Ramani, Iranian wrestler, one of the very few. And Big Dan complaining that he's getting his fingers bent backwards. Uh, you know, one thing I'll say about Dan Manasoyo as well that always stands out for me is just his absolute stone face expression when competing. Yeah, which is funny because he's he's kind of a guy off the mat. He you is. Know? Very easy going. And he comes out, he's going to play this same strategy again. I think maybe if I'm Dan... I might lay back and, and draw Rachmani in a little bit more, try to employ the half guard a little bit, see if I can use that to get an upper body clinch and then maybe switch back to the butterfly. Yeah, good. Work, work on his head. Looks like Rachmani took a, a, a little toe to the eye there. Completely unintentional, of course, but just unfortunate. Man, if there's one thing you want to get poked in the eye with, it's definitely not Dan Manasoy's big toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't even the big toe, it was the pinky toe. <laughs> that, was, that was the highlight of the evening for me so far. <laughs> very similar strategy, very similar posture and 
intent here so far from Romani. He's really not engaging by going forward too much. And there he goes. Dan now going to play with his half guard. I feel like John Wayne sweep right here. You know, try and un try and hit that base. Just try and off balance him a little bit with the lower body and see if it opens up something up top because. Dan Manasoy is trying, but he's not getting any grip. He's not able to draw Ramani forward. Oh. <laughs> Ramani really not impressed by Manasoy's foot sweep attempt right there. Kind of like, bro, you want to kick me? That's going to be an issue. Frustration coming out from Ramani. Yeah, he really did not like that. And look on his face, man, that was an angry dude right no, there. No, don't go, don't go inside. Yeah. The problem for Big Dan is he prefers his butterfly guard, you know? Okay. Uh, not that that's a, really a problem, but it's a problem in a situation like this because he's not able to really develop it into a clinch. And this point. is the kind of guy you're going to have to clinch to present offense on. But every time he goes to put his butterfly hook in, Rachmani, pulls back and disengages so I think maybe the half guard just drawing him in towards a half guard and then using that to establish a clinch and then maybe put the butterfly hook back in yeah you can't pass the guard but that kick from Rachmani got him a, got him a negative got him a penalty don't give up Ooh, aggressive Head positioning right there from both yeah, guys. Romani side, getting oh, a little side, bit more side. aggressive. <laughs> He's going to have to get more aggressive. He's got to try something. Here's the shoulder crunch attempt now from Big Dan. Getting to the underhook. Romani dropping to the side. Yeah, good, good, good. Keep going, keep going. You can pass. Yeah, good, good. Side to side. Other That's side. better from yeah, Romani. Side. That's the first real good, significant good. move we've seen from him in trying to deal with those legs and run around and get to the upper body but as he's done so he's falling into that position go on the hook on the hook and you can and dan now up. switching back to the legs and this is good for big dan oh yeah he's definitely going to try and go, go after back, that go ankle go back, but back, ooh, we have a wardrobe malfunction here losing his britches oh man i'm wondering how much that restart of that little adjustment right there took the wind out of the sails of manasori but well he had already lost the entanglement but Follows it back to the top, and he's going to score the sweep right there. All right, two points on the board for Dan Manasoya. That's good work here. And now, well, this is such a different picture compared to when Romani was on top. Look at the control from Dan Manasoya, already chest to chest, underhook cross face, and big forward shoulder pressure into the face. Rachmani holding on to this traditional half. Dan going to... Oh, look at that, Rachmani. At the back door. They as yes. Manasoyu yes. kicked his leg free. They're going to give him two for that. That's a reversal. It yes. is yes. under these you rules. That is considered a one reversal from one under one a bottom negative. position. If you reverse from underneath side control, underneath mount, that is two points. So yes. now it's one only that one negative that. here Four. between them. Quick um, cleanup for the blood on Dan Manasori's face, but man, I did not expect Romani to come out from underneath Big Dan's mount. Well, he didn't quite make it to the mount. He's still working towards the mount, which meant that Romani still had his guard in play. And so really, I guess in any rule set, that would be a reversal. He basically used a deep half guard. You know, not what we would traditionally think of when we think of deep half you think about a guy getting like under the, there and playing deep half it was like the latest possible stage of a deep half guard yeah. right yeah it was like as the ankle was almost coming free that he was able to come out the back door like that and man well, i feel like manasoyu all right when he got to that half guard position he really put the weight on him and i feel like romani's going to be a hard guy to hold down oh uh, yeah <laughs> Just the power of his beard alone. <laughs> it is an epic. Yeah, see, so look at that. Just nice basically word. uses it to turn it into a deep half. And Dan basically conceded his guard yeah, at that point. Point. All right. Yeah, I wasn't sure what Dan was saying to the referee right there, but... Uh, one, one negative. We're back in now and we've got... Just over a minute remaining in this second round. 
Yeah, good, good. Go. Go Mine getting yeah. some gripping on the upper body. Yeah, put pressure. Put the pressure on him. Put the pressure. Nice. And here's the shoulder pressure, crunch attempt now. Nice, good. Big Dan maybe going to the shoulder saddle to change on his him, sides. On him. On him. Nice, nice, nice. So flexible for good, such a big good. guy. You don't see many heavyweights yeah, being able to point. throw their leg all the way up over the top like that. Rachmani got to use that yeah, opportunity good, good. to switch go. sides, play Change that rumble direction. pass Change and back direction. and forth. He's using Change his direction. right arm to clinch the shoulder One if he goes side, down around the side. hip instead. Yeah. Oh, there's a back step. Again, Nearly again, clears it. Up. Nice recovery there from Manasoya. Right leg comes over seconds, the top. 30 seconds for you. Peter, you have to get this round. Kind of like a half butterfly here. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. You have to get this round for you. Dan again. Go, go pass his guard. You can't pass it. You Working the pass. underhook. And nice. here's Dan put, put now. Put pressure. Put pressure. Going inverted. Possibly looking go, for go, a cross go. Ashi entry. Rachmane pulls back. Nice. Go, go, go. Body lock seconds. attempt. And this is a good clinching opportunity here, but we're running out of time. All right. Ten minutes into this match, we got one more five-minute period coming up. Intense match. And I'm really wondering here how Manasoya is going to do adjust the strategy the the call round, for points, an, a KG opponent yeah. like Ramani and how Ramani is going to adjust his for dealing with the this tricky guard of the big flexible guy in front of him it, that was the that was the move that pissed let's off let's see the kick Ramani. back Boom. yeah solid up. leg kick solid leg kick hey we we know what how effective those calf kicks can be <laughs> If I'm Big Dan, I'm not changing my strategy at all. It's a winning strategy in the so tool set. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be exciting. It just has to be a win. You know, that's not a great prize fighting strategy, maybe, but it is a great winning strategy, especially in this rule set. And he, you know, to his credit, he used that strategy to come up and score. Here's that last second reversal there from Ramani coming out the back door. Lifting up all 125 kilograms of Big Dan Manasoy on his shoulder and putting him back down. 125 kilos. It's a big These boy. These guys are on, just monsters. I think he's about 270, Big Dan. He like walks around here right about 270. That's uh, Yeah, like 6'7", 270. Uh -huh, 6'7", 270. Big, Crazy. big Dan, yep. Easy to see why. Rachmani's beard's about 220. Something going on in the corner over there. A lot of chat. Doctors over in the corner. Referees calling Big Dan back into the center. Okay, I think they were just yeah, kind just of talking like, about the blood yeah, streaking down his face. The referee was basically saying, hey, you've got to get back in to the action here. But it's, uh, I was really, really worried that they were going to Final stop round. it right there. Yep, same strategy again from Big Dan. And again, that's a winning strategy so far. Two rounds in the bag. Rachmani has to finish him here. I hear the Battle Force coach basically saying side to side. And I feel like that we haven't seen him do that. He's been very insistent on passing to the same side when he does go forward. And like you were saying, man, if he just switched direction, he might be able to open something up here. Yeah, at least create some movement that could potentially, you know, open up some of Big Dan's movement and maybe create a mistake. But to be fair, that's exactly what Big Dan wants too, is a little bit of movement. A little bit of movement's gonna create some space underneath the hips and maybe give him a chance to get into his leg entanglement, which is what he really wants. Now I do wonder how much of a factor in Dan Manasoy's performance here tonight was the fact that he flew in to Almaty, Kazakhstan this morning, basically about 12, 13 hours ago. Yeah, we were on the same flight coming in, and we were both coming off that flight like zombies. And and what, it was like a 25-hour travel, something like that, you know, from Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, where, he, of course, he competed in the UFC Fight Pass events. And to, uh, to make it all the way from Las Vegas to here in Central Asia and then compete pretty much straight off the plane, that's a tall order. And he had a 
seriously grueling match against Victor Hugo over there as well. And another admonition for Rahmani. Get engaged. Rahmani really doesn't look impressed, <laughs> the referee. Every time he's getting told that he's getting handsy, he's just like, come on, man. What? It's my game. What do you want? This is the spot right here for Rachmani. Change that passing strategy up in these moments here. What you can't do is let Big Dan get this shoulder crunch position, get this overhook here. Oh, and the butterfly. He's got the butterfly plus that upper body grip. That's when he turns people. Too much blood coming down from the owner. Oh, no, I think that was an eye poke, actually. I thought that maybe yeah. it was going to be a, an issue with the blood coming down from the forehead into his eyes, but I think that was an eye poke. This is a pretty good position here. Almost got the tilt. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. I didn't I see it. I, I, didn't I didn't see, see it either, but it feels like um, we've seen it twice now so far, but I feel like Manasaur <laughs> is hoping to get some elevation from that position so that he can go into like the ankle lock control, maybe attack the legs, maybe let's just use it to come up on top, but Ramani is proving a, uh, a tough customer and very hard to hold on to. Well, he's an incredible power, incredibly powerful athlete. But he, I wouldn't say he's a busy athlete, though, you know. He's leaving a lot of gas in the tank here. And I mean, maybe he feels they've already lost, and so he doesn't have the motivation to go out there and push the pace, but... And there's the, the call from his corner. Change direction and pass this guard. Right to change direction. Go for another side. Well, for how quick those first two matches went, these last few have been the opposite of that. You can pass. I'm intrigued here about how Romani is just so insistent on passing to the same side over and over and over. He's basically always going to his right, to Damon Sawyer's left. Look at that, big Dan. 6'7", 270, inverting underneath a wrestling expert. Two minutes, two minutes for you. Yeah, because not only is he inverting under the weight, he's inverting under the pressure as well. Nice. Yeah, go, go. And you can even He's hear going. the coach He's from Battle Force. You can hear him saying, change direction, change direction. Nice, nice. And Romani so side. far hasn't heeded the advice. Yeah, good, good, good. Now, finally, yeah. a little look at going left. Keep going, keep going. Yes, you can pass now. Now you can pass. Well, he, he's insistent on gripping go, go, at go. the shoulders and the upper body of Dan every time he gets deep. Come on, but every time that he goes to grip that cross face, this is a better play here. Every time he goes to grip that cross face, Dan locks up that shoulder with the underhook. Oh, no, no. And now this could be an entry here for Big Dan. Oh. Oh. Other leg, other leg. There oh. it is. Oh, yeah, he's this, got the heel exposure. He's going to get that. Taps. Wow. It took a long time for Dan Manasoyu to find his way into that position. But when he did, he wasted no time in talking the knee for the inside heel hook and getting the submission victory hard fought match and we talked about the physicality aspect and did big Dan Manasoyo looks pretty beat up actually those eye pokes have taken their toll well he's got 24 hours to rest and recover before they return to face the winner of Universal Fighters versus Asai Republic and as their only heavyweight representative Dan Manasoyo is going to have to uh Gonna have to go home and make sure he's ready to go for tomorrow. Yeah, because he's gonna have his hands full tomorrow, whether it ends up with Anton or Ruslan off of Universal Fighters. And now, after submission called, one fighter 
Red Connor Daniel Manasso. In five matches so far, Team Adolfo, a clean sweep, three submissions, and two wins by points. Let's talk us through the action, Brandon. Well, here was Big Dan tried to wrestle up, looking for that Uchi Mata. Rachmani's wrestling base just not going to allow that. And here, Rachmani, every time that Big Dan came to the feet, Rachmani had him hitting a brick wall. This was a beautiful play to complete the sweep using the leg entanglement. It was Montessoyu to get the turn, but then we saw as Big Dan tried to progress and finish his pass all the way into the mount. Rachmani essentially using that deep half guard to come out the back door. And here, this is going to be the elevation here. There it is. Finally, Big Dan, all he needed is that one look. Gets the cross Ashi, and as soon as he's there, I mean, just no real defense against the inside heel hook. That was a really beautiful entry. You just, if you're Rachmani, you just can't be used to seeing a big guy that moves that well on the inversions and then through the leg entanglements. Really didn't take him long to dig out the heel either. And he didn't even have to apply a, a lot of pressure through it. I oh, feel but like. he did anyway. Oh, he, he got it in. Yeah, okay, I'll take that back. <laughs> I thought him being Dan and after such a physical match with a guy who's number one trying to frustrate you and number two getting pretty physical. You wouldn't, you wouldn't hold it against him for ripping that on, but yeah. he, put, he just put enough pressure through it. That's, let's say that. Next fight, 91 kilo. The fight formula is three rounds of five minutes each. I am inviting to the red corner model for team. Please welcome Giancarlo Padoni. Team captain, 2022 ADCC World Champion, Giancarlo Bodoni, takes to the man here at the AIGA Champions League, representing Team Modolfo in this sixth, sixth matchup, and a possible seven, in a total seven between Team Modolfo and Badalos. Bodoni was so good last time. Rival to the blue corner. Alibi or And Alibi Orzbek from right here in Almaty, Kazakhstan is also the team captain. So, coincidence being, you have Giancarlo Bodoni from Team Adolfo going up against Alibi Orzbek of Battle Force. Great to see two team leaders going against each other. And they have some shared history that maybe we'll talk about in a second, but... And now I'm introducing two fighters in the red corner. He's 28, height 100 centimeters, weight 91 kilos. He is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt level. ADCC world champion, Pan American Nogi champion. He's represent model for team. He's from Austin, Texas. Make some noise! Giancarlo Padoni! His opponent in the blue corner, height 185 centimeters, weighs Weight in 91 kilos. He's brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I got Kazakhstan national champion. He represents Battle Force team. Fighter from Kazakhstan. Give it up to Alibi Orazbe. Referee in the match, Robert Tigel. Well, I was about to say the shit history between the two. Believe it or not, that uh, Alibi Orzbek is Round actually one. a brown belt under John Danaher, who is the coach that took Giancarlo Bodoni from a, uh, a kind of a, you know, known but not exactly spectacular competitor on the black belt circuit and elevated him and took him to the ADCC World Championship gold medal. So technically teammates, but right here, right now, in the Champions League final, Battle Force versus Team Adolfo, 
They'll put that aside. Giancarlo stalking Alibi. You were about to say, Brandon, that Giancarlo, he had such a great showing in the first time round here at Aiga. Yeah, he was really one of the stars of the entire event last time. Now working that two-on-one, reaches to a single. Tries to tap the knee, already throwing in the first hook and climbing. Here comes Badoni, now puts on that half Nelson. Interesting to note that Giancarlo gives up the takedown and ch kind of chasing the back instead because in this initial two minute period of the first five minute round, well, takedown points score, but back control does not. However, I wonder if he's able to break him down and get him to turtle. That is considered to be uh, a takedown. And Badoni, he's got, he's got so much confidence in his offensive systems. But if he can get him down, he uses it to pull him to the ground. So he should get the two for that. Now there comes the second hook. And it, it might just be all academic from this point. Yeah, he's can't quite see. There we go. There's a much better look at this control position. He took the hook out and actually has gone to that kind of uh, one hook back control. Aggressive hand fighting. What that does, though, is that sets him up to throw that hook in in 12 seconds and get his first score. That's a great point. However, he's got that left hand kind of looking. Oh, he's close the body lock on the bottom side. Closes the body triangle shortly before the points become active. But if he, if he was to open that and put it back on, that's a scoring position. Interesting that they didn't give him the points for that takedown. It wasn't what you'd consider a traditional takedown, but it did yeah. pull him down to the floor. I mean, it broke him all the way down to a hip. Used wrestling to get to his back. Pulled him down to his hip. I mean, that's a takedown. I mean, I see your case. Something will definitely have to Ooh, uh, question the judges on later. Oh, yeah, Dan that's going to be He's going to get that. You can see Giancarlo pushing Alibi Orazbek's head forward to try and get that really get your oh, deep up. But this is it. some good defense from the Kazakh grappler. They're going to call him back it. in the middle. Yeah. So that is an interesting question about the takedown. And I do wonder if it's because he didn't land in turtle or on his back. And, you know, they, they kind of fell that Giancarlo was in back control. So no traditional takedown per se but yeah but i mean it, it accomplished the same thing that a takedown accomplishes absolutely he used wrestling to initiate it he got it down to a hip i mean he took him down to the mat yeah there what do you, you go what, do you what does it matter what position they landed in but for the referees obviously it does but body triangle Giancarlo both only words to open that and to simply reposition it after having it open for three seconds. He could, he could score. He got three points on the board, but instead he wants you see to finish. Him. Though he's yeah. he's trying to bring this thing home for the squad. Very active in trying to work his arm around the neck and Libby showing. And that's a good good work there by Libby to break that body triangle with this nice job by Badoni switching the body triangle off to the other side. Now Libby starting to shake that bottom hook out. That was really nice body triangle defense. Take note if you're watching at home, you're a jiu-jitsu guy. That was a great way to break the body triangle. Alibi stepping over the bottom leg. Yeah, excellent work by Alibi defensively. Nice re, uh, reposition there by Giancarlo Bodoni. Kind of slides his hips underneath his back and puts him back into this one hook back control. And now he's in a position to maybe throw this hook in and get the score. And Giancarlo is so good from the chest to back position. Yeah, amazing. There's that, there's that second hook. He's going to score right now. That should make it 3-0. Yes. Giancarlo Bodoni's new wave teammate and training partner, Big Dan Monsayo, was watching from the sidelines. He saw that look over his shoulder. And this man is so huge. It looks like he's a mile away. They really have plenty of room to work here at the Aiga Champions League. Look at this, Alibi breaks the chest of back connection. Giancarlo utilizing that gift wrap. Try to hold on to him. He's going to try to come up, chair sit, beautiful technical work by Badoni. That really was. Alibi managed to kind of wedge the shoulder between them briefly, but lovely work from 
Bogdonian just adjusting the position, going high here. Could we see him go for the, the triangle from the back? I think we're going to see him switch to the arm just because time is running out. But that, this, this attacking position right here, we've seen it all going around the neck as well. It's not enough time. We've seen that attacking position become so common lately. I think it was pretty much popularized by the New Wave guys and then kind of has been taken up and is now a real fundamental position in the no key meta. But that back triangle attack right there and going for the arm, thought that you know, Bogdoni might be looking as he dug his heel into the, uh, to the elbow, but really impressive defense there from Olivia. Impressive defense, but really a total domination positionally from Madonna. Look at that. So look, uses the, changes levels, gets to the single, changes off to the knee tap double, misses it, slides around to the back, pulls him down, drops him onto a hip. That's, I don't know, I don't understand how that's not a score. Yeah, maybe because he wasn't on top. Maybe that's the factor because they okay. landed and they're both on their sides. So it's not a takedown per se because Jam Carlo Bodoni did not land well, on top. I, but I, I thought this was the rap, the rap right here. Yeah, ooh, look at that. Man, Alivi had a really, he had to dig deep to get out of that one. Round two. Well, Arasbek spent the vast majority of that round basically an entire round of back defense. Nice shot. Nice shot. Grabs the single, pulls it high, tries to run the pot. Oh, nice work from Boldoni there. Puts in the whizzer. Not out of danger yet. You could see Orsbeck run the pipe here. Maybe knee tap double. Yeah, this is good wrestling here. Good head position, nice straight posture. Wow, great dexterity there from Bodoni and staying on one leg. Changing levels is Alibi. Sucks that leg out. Now he's got a nice elevation on the leg. He's going to look to trip on the back side. Oh, Bodoni tries to turn and rip that foot out. The ankle lock grip pretty tight there from Marsbeck. Tries to kick out the sport and then gets it back. Not gonna score it. Oh, that worked for a non-scoring takedown. Not able to consolidate position once they hit the mat. Really nice work by Alibi though. And he needs to do more of that. He needs to wrestle hard. Oh! Beautiful throw by there from uh, Bodoni and get into this rear body lock and you see he's got the oh, ref Rob Deagle just runs it back into the mat and very reminiscent of that first round. One hook in straight away. Matt Bodoni is just an absolute hunter when it comes to the back position. Second hook in, body triangle locked on. And he's got control of the cross grip. Body triangle is on. Still 15 seconds away from the points becoming active, but Bodoni doesn't really seem to care too much about playing any strategy here. He's all about looking for the finish. Yeah, he's definitely trying to utilize the straight jacket system. You see the way he takes control of that cross grip. You got to watch the height of the hand here. Here it comes. Hand's still just a little bit too high, but Donnie wants to push that cross grip down below, around the belly button of a Ra's back. Look for the arm trap. And try to trap the arm. That's right. And I wonder, considering that they are teammates, considering that Arasbeck did go up to brown belt under John Danaher, whether his familiarity and training with Danaher, his knowledge of the straight jacket straight jack system, is the, the simple fact that he's hanging on for so long here Look against the world class. Escaping black, again, black, though. Black, 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 black. Escaping again. Nice save by Badoni. Back to the body triangle again. Uh, I believe he'll score again for that. Yes, he does. 6-0 now. Bodoni stacking up this lead. Two 
There's the cross grip reinforced on his own hand. Doni wants to turn him to the other side. Trying to create a trap on that other arm. I think really noticeable in this uh, entire match so far in both rounds up until this point is that we haven't seen Bodoni risk anything by going high, go dropping off for an arm or even moving into the mount position. He's very, very patient and consistent in his strategy of working from this back control chest to back position. Well, Alibi doing a good job just on surviving the positions. And you see he's got that bottom hook shaking out of there, sitting his hip and his body weight onto that potential bottom hook. Now uses it to turn. Wow. Really nice defensive work. Comes up with an overhook. Going to play his butterfly guard here. But Doni, though, into the body lock. Nice use of the hook to elevate. Breaks the body lock. Makes an entry on the leg, but Doni countering, turning through. He's going to use this to take the back again. Yeah, but Alibi was looking for something from that outside Ashi position, but it just was a little bit too loose. However, he's managed to at least avoid the back control, but Doni is pressuring forward with that body lock. But this is much better work from Alibi. You know, for the first time in this match, he's able to do something that isn't just purely defensive. But it's still, it's, <laughs> you know, it's still defensive. It's just not being scored on anymore. I mean, he's flat on his back. Badoni doesn't have his hands locked right now, but he's pressing forward, looking to establish some upper body grips. 6 0. So Badoni. Running away with it right now. Alibi's going to have to submit him here in this third round if he wants a chance for the victory. Bodoni's composure in this match so far is so impressive. His discipline through every position, taking no risks, taking his time, very patient in, in looking for the submission. Alibi, great defense, but really, I love that sweep single there that he shot early in this match. He worked so hard to try and off-balance Bodoni to try and put him down, but when he finally did, Bodoni just popped straight back up. Yes, really nice wrestling from both guys. But just wasn't able to follow through. Man, that could have made a huge difference in the way the match turned out. Another lengthy period in this round was spent with Alibi simply having to defend from the very, very one-sided position of Giancarlo Bodoni on his back. Final round. Oh, Check different strategy from Bodoni in pulling guard. He knows he has final five-minute stanza in this three-minute, or excuse me, three five-minute round match. And I'm wondering if, you know, Alibi sees this and he's like, hey, finally, this is my opportunity. I can do something. Bodoni obviously very confident in his guard. And he should be. I mean, yeah, maybe Alibi sees an opportunity because Bodoni's down on his back. But now you've got to pass the guard of Giancarlo Bodoni. Oh, look at that. Spins underneath. And oh, and look oh. at this. Cross century. A little bit loose there. Alibi was uh, maybe not fully committed to that entanglement. Bodoni did a good job of keeping his heel hidden, following the movement, releasing the knee line. Alibi stepping in. Oh, look at this. Nice entry. That was a nice play. Bodoni doing a good job following. Alibi using his left hand to try to corral that knee and drag it back inside. Badoni, oh, this is the play that he got uh, oh, Flanagan with. Yeah, I was going to say he got Owen O'Flanagan with this at ADCC. There's some pressure on that. I think Libby, there was a little look there of like, mm, that's not comfortable. Do I really want to do this? Yeah. What a counter from Bodoni. I mean, that basically 
that stopped Ball, Alibi in his tracks. Even though the submission wasn't Ball, fully on, there was Ball, enough of a threat there. Alibi was like, I got to bail out of this Ball, position. Carefully. <laughs> well, it essentially puts you into a toe hold when he goes into that corkscrew lock. When that leg reaps over, so you saw Badoni take his hand and free, like push away on Rosbeck's leg. Oh, Rosbeck looking for this Mateusz Shashinsky style straight ankle lock, bringing in that butterfly hook from the outside. Well, don't he's so calm under the face of uh, the face of those leg attacks. So he's just, I mean, you can tell, you know, training in the uh, the new wave training room there with guys like Gordon Ryan, like Nicholas Marigali, like Big Dan Manasoy. Luke You'd have Griffith. to think that Luke Griffith, thank you. The, the work that he's put in, spent time hanging out in those positions, you're going to be comfortable. Not just in the training room either, but he's basically seen everything you can see as a com at a the highest level of competition as well. Now Badoni makes an entry on the legs. There's the reap, exposure of the heel. Ooh, Badoni. Z lock here? Yeah, maybe. I see this outside heel. If he turns and follows, here it is. Got the foot on the hip. Digging for the heel. Looks like he's got the wrist underneath the heel. Kind of hard to see. He's a little bit hidden here. Okay, Alibi manages to. And, and get he turns it, out. it into a cross Ashi of his own. Did not expect this third and final round to turn into a leg lock shootout, but I'm kind of enjoying it. Well, I think it's a smart play by Alibi. He's giving himself a chance to win. He knows he's not in a position where scoring is going to help him. He has to get in here and find a submission. So I like the strategy chains. I think it's good gamesmanship, smart strategy. Going to the body lock versus Badoni, versus Badoni's butterfly. But that's a slow play. You only got a minute 15 to go. And really, to me, this is Badoni's most beautiful game is his butterfly guard. And we saw him hit some incredible sweeps off his butterfly guard last time we were here in August. Yeah, Alibi is doing his best to try and get that body lock pass going, but Bodoni just looks so shoulder comfortable crunch. underneath and he manages to now release the body lock, put on the shoulder crunch. Doesn't look to elevate though. 30 seconds remaining in this third and final five minute round. Yeah, I don't think Bodoni felt like it made any sense for him to expend a lot of energy on that position. I mean, he's had decisively. One last ankle lock here from Rasbeck puts, slips out. Ten seconds remain. Could we see Bodoni once more slide onto the back? Yes, we do. That's the danger of that outside Ashi position. If you go into that outside Ashi without the heel hook locked in already, it's just against a real guy, you're almost asking to get your back taken or to get mounted and smashed. Total domination, honestly, from Badoni. Yeah, he won all three rounds. And considering that the other two uh, wins by points in this uh, series, Team Adolfo, those, uh, those matches and are very now, different. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, this fight lasted for all three rounds. Won this fight by points fighter in the red corner, Madolfo team, Giancarlo Padoni. You know, those first two uh, matches we saw end by points in the Modolfo versus Battle 4 series. Very different to this one, where the Modolfo representatives won the first round but drew the second and third. Whereas that one, Giancarlo Bodoni won all three rounds pretty convincingly, I, I would say. And uh, wow, clean sweep so far from Modolfo. The last round was pretty much pretty funny. back and forth. Yeah. But he ended up winning it. Six. Six matches in a row for Team Adolfo. We're basically one match away from being a clean sweep here, but it's just a, a look at, that was the earlier stages in the match. Uh, Alibi was, man, I'm very impressed by his back control defense. I'm gonna say that. I, I, 
I find it hard to uh, think of many people who could survive in that position for so long against Jan Bodoni. Here's that single leg exchange from Alibi. There's the big trip, so close. And that could have changed the, the course of the match entirely. Alibi threw up a number of leg attacks throughout this uh, final round. Got a good bite on the heel right there, just not able to secure the position. Both guys ended up essentially having the same same play against each other. Yeah, Bodoni had answers for everything that Alibi threw at him, and we have one remaining match in this series. And now next fight, 65 kilos. The fight formalized the round of five minutes each. And now I'm inviting to the red corner. Carao Gabriel de Arrujo Barbosa. His rival to the blue corner. Please welcome Atakeldi. Yes, Tata. <laughs> Referee in the mat, Robert Diggle. Final match in this series now, as you can see, Kawan Gabriel going up against Atakel Diasatov. Round one. Brazil versus Kazakhstan. And if you've not heard of Kawan Gabriel, well, he is one of the up and comers coming out of Melki Galvao's powerhouse team, originally from Manaus, now based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And Kawan Gabriel, while well, he made his mark, and I think that he earned his spot on this Modolfo team by winning double gold at the ADCC Open in Brazil after competing in the 77 kilogram division. You don't see many guys going out and winning the absolute at that weight class. Yeah, it's pretty much unheard of. Yesitov getting down, looking to pass this guard early. And not only that, Brandon, but Kawan Gabriel did that double gold with 100% submission rate. That's insane. Yesatov breaks the grips, returns to standing. <laughs> Keeping those fingers locked. Yes, Atab, looking for a way through the guard of Gabriel. Nothing there so far. See Gabriel using the left arm. Try to drag him in. KG start so far by Yesatov and Kawan Gabriel is uh, certainly not rushing his attack, but maybe as we saw in the earlier matches, he's simply waiting for that three minute mark, uh, three minute remaining to come up and try to reverse position and score, but now going Check high. This out. Using this to try to counter the double underhooks, he wants to pull that arm through, gonna go look for the shoulder saddle on the other side. Points are now active as well. Gabriel looking for the arm lock on the far side. Nice job by Yesatov to shut him out. Tried to break the engagement, unable to do it. Gabriel pulls him down into his closed guard. Yeah, I like Yesatov's uh, answer to that because it wasn't really a technical answer as such. It was just a really staying disciplined with his posture, really not going too far out of position and shutting it down but here with his head across the center line that's that's not great position to be in right for sure threatening the head maybe maybe thinking about this arm and guillotine if he can switch his hip using the chin strap here as you can see versus the body lock all right switching off the kimura just classic closed guard dilemma Hip bump sweep, Kimura, Gitti, threatening them as one unit. 
Bir minut 40 sekund kaldı Ataş. There's the power sweep attempt, maybe. Good job by Yusuf kicking out of that, recognizing that threat early. Well, Cohen's having difficulty digging anything in here so far. I mean, uh, Yesitov is staying so tight with his elbows. He uh, he can't dig in the guillotine, couldn't dig in the, the Kimura grip. And Gabriel chose to open the guard, just didn't feel like he was getting the looks and the movement that he needed nope. from the close guard position. Now trying to create an elevation with this De La Hiva. Oh, that's better. Gets underneath briefly. False reap attempt. Oh, there's a knee ball though. Where is the knee ball? Yes, it's all. It's got it locked out. That's dangerous there for a second. There was real pressure on that leg there briefly. Cohen Gabriel manages to uh, resist and go into the 50-50. Could be dropping back for a heel. We've got 30 seconds remaining here. Going to use it to try and at least maybe score some points, but... Trying to turn the corner, but... Yes, it's all. Digs underneath, goes that inside spin. Nice work here. Now the counter leg attack. Going to this Mikey Lock style play. Shades of Mikey Musumichi. Switches to the toe hold. Not going to be there. Oh, wow. wow. Okay, interesting uh, little sequence there right towards the end of that first five minute round. And that pat knee bar. It wasn't, let's say, it wasn't like a real threat in terms of like making Kawan tap, but it was the only move in this match so far that actually had like real pressure on it. So I have to point it out, but yes, still playing it safe earlier in the match, but definitely willing to open up the game a little bit more in the latter stage. Well, it was that false reap attack, or not false reap first round it was drop. that false reap attack that really opened up the movement. As Gabriel tried to drag him into a leg entanglement and the counter knee bar from Gabriel as he navigated his way through it. Yeah, we see right here from Yesitov, you know, he catches it very nice. If he'd maybe had the grip of his left arm a little higher, maybe on top of the thigh and around about the knee instead of lower on the leg like that, it Couple. could have been a very different situation. That was a good play too. Gabriel just did a good job with the counter. But that was a nice play from the 50-50, creating that like, pressure, forcing Gabriel to, for his weight to kind of collapse back on top of him, and using that opportunity to spin underneath that inside spin. Round two. If I was judging that, I would give that first round to Yesitov. I'm not judging it though, as it turns out. <laughs> nope, just, just sat here right next to me yeah. on the call and couldn't think of anybody to better to uh, share this event with. And so far, I mean, this Aiga Champions League round one between Battle Force and Team Adolfo has delivered on all fronts with three submissions in seven matches, or six matches so far. This is the seventh. Yes, it's off. Aggressive, popping around the other side. And now Cal Gabriel getting into an ankle lock, and he's going to try to use that to come up, it looks like. This is a very unorthodox position right here. Look at the way that uh, Kawan Gabriel's foot was kind of wedged on the, on the neck of Yesitov. Yesitov was cupping his elbow to stop him from building base and coming up high. And Using the threat of the arm attack to switch back to the legs is Gabriel. Got to watch out for this kid, though. Yesitov showing that he's no slouch when it comes to the leg entanglements. Going to the esteem a lot. Like this, both guys kind of trying these faux ankle locks. Not quite there for either one. No, 
Carlin Gabriel street foot block, definitely nothing happening there. No real control position or pressure through the shin or through the, the ankle to force a tap. But he does kind of come up on top now. And the first time we've really seen him work this position in this match. Points are about to hit, and you see Gabriel looking around. Is it points time yet? Attacks the leg and goes to his butt. Outside heel, not quite there. Knee line, not exactly where he needs it. He's going to use it to switch off to the inside heel. Gripping on those toes. You can finish just with that grip if the knee position is right. Yeah, trying to push. Looked like he was trying to put some sideways pressure through the knee there with his hips. Or, or maybe trying to pass it across to the reap. Does manage it to get it, get it across the body into this uh, ankle lock grip, but yeah, it can be super hard to finish that. A Oki lock attempt from Yesatov. But I have to say, of the seven matches total among the this this series between Battle Force and Modolfo, this is by far the most evenly matched. Yeah, for sure. And Kawan Gabriel definitely kind of, I would say, probably the the least experienced member of the Team Adolfo squad. Certainly deserving of his position here, but, you know, a little bit green compared to his uh, his teammates. And they just had such a clear dominance against their opponents, but Gowan Gabriel's finding uh, Yestov to be a tricky, uh, tricky puzzle to solve, and... So far, Yestov's had all the, the technical answers that you need to be able to go up against somebody like Kawan Gabriel. Ooh, now pulling that leg across to the outside. he be able to create quite a lot of pressure with that ankle lock. Now an Aoki switches it out. Less than a minute to go. A score from anybody would be huge right here. <laughs> nice work by Yesatov, sneaking out the back door against that attempted guard pass. Now getting into the leg and taking it. Gonna try to use it to come up and sweep. Gabriel shuts him out, going to this belly down ankle lock. Could be a lot of pressure. Oh my goodness. Nice spin from Yestov, trying to go high, but with 10 seconds remaining in this match, gonna be difficult for either man to finish this submission. Colin Gabriel doing his best to force pressure through the ankle, but there it is, end of the match. I, I really feel like Yesatov's gotten the better of both of these rounds so far. If I'm the judge, or if I'm one of the judges, I should say, I've got Yesatov in the lead. Two rounds to zero. And now, ladies and gentlemen, draw after second round. All right, so third and final rounds. And just a reminder that basically each round is like an individual match. You know, we're not totaling the points across these rounds at the end of the three rounds. It's the, a, a best of three contest. Here's some of that dueling leg lock action from earlier in the match. That was a lot of pressure on that leg. Yesatov does 
Look, he almost like rolled his eyes back in his head. Like, look, are you seriously trying to take my feet? Round three, final round. <laughs> And they both rush to get to their guard as quick as they can. And that's a race down to the mat. Ten seconds into this round, and they are they both hit the mat with force, but Kawan Gabriel from Brazil. Collecting to pass here. This is interesting, you know, just from a team and strategy perspective. We haven't seen the wrestling, especially the initial points period where you can only score with wrestling. We haven't really seen that be a huge factor for this matchup. I no. think when Universal Fighters comes up next round, though, That'll be we're going to see different. a big style change between the teams. Yeah, Kawan Gabriel is um, being coached by not only his uh, his main coach, his head coach, Melky Galval, but right, right next to him as well is ADCC champion Diogo Hayes. Going high was the s off there, but Diogo Hayes was originally scheduled to compete here at the IGA Champions League as part of Team Adolfo, but an injury to his knee in his recent Who's Number One title defense that, uh, well, cost him the match, his title, and unfortunately his place here at the Ayaga Champions League. But still, he sat here supporting his teammates, as he has done all week. And now look at that, going high. Oh my on goodness. The Wee, that, was, that was closer than Gabriel wanted it to be, for sure. Going into this false ex guard here as well from uh, Yesitov and makes yep, a nice entry up. on the leg. Man, Yesitov's leg game looks sharp. A little bit lazy in shooting up that uh, that entanglement, though. Kawan Gabriel was able to withdraw the trapped leg. The ankle lock grip's still active, but really not so much pressure to try, try and go for something. You see yes top with his hand behind the knee trying to create a bend in the leg so that maybe he can expose the heel hook. Yes, Atav going to this belly down or this straight ankle lock pressure again, not belly down. And keeping the arm behind the knee. He has a very, very loose, very shallow kind of hook on the with his right leg. It's it's kind of like a really, really weak inside Sankaku, but. Well, Kawan Gabriel uses it to be, he beats the hips, he's coming around, he's trying to stack, trying to come all the way around the, to the to the back here. Does a nice job of, of hooking the the free leg, so it's not a, he's managed to deny the leg entanglement. Kawan Gabriel, look, his leg is completely taut here, but he's going to come out, he's going to come on the back. Oh, he may not, there's a calf crushing action, look at this! Look at this, hip lock and calf crush. Kara Gabriel is trying to come around to the back. He's got a rear body lock, but look at the position of that knee. He's got to oh. be careful. Yes, top test in the flexibility of Gabriel. Gabriel's going high. If he can resist, if he can kick that leg free, he's going to come straight out into a possible arm triangle or back take here. Kawan Gabriel cinching up that grip on the top, but the pressure through the lower leg, you could see the strain on his face, but now he's in a really strong position. Is he going to go back control? Yes, he is. Chest to back. So that should probably put some points on the board for Gabriel. I'm not seeing them pop up. I guess when he turtled up, it, it lost the guard pass. 
Yeah, it needs to get Hoods to, to score from this position, but going up really high. Looks like he's trying to work for a Kimura grip from the top possible switch from the seatbelt. Very hard to see from this position. But yes, Sov's going to come out the back door by the look of it. Yes, he does. Time will expire. 0-0 nice. zero, zero to that third and final round. I think you got to give that fight to Yesitov. I think he shuts Madolfo out from having the clean sweep. But six matches to one. Again, I'm not the guy that's actually in charge of deciding the winner. But I think if you're being objective and looking at that, that's Yesitov's match. Yeah, we're seeing some discussion over at the judges' table as to which way that this one will go. Yeah, I feel like he won this all three Gabriel. You see Melky Galvang kind of talking to him. I don't think Melky looks too happy with that performance. But yes, Tom has won the respect of the crowd. And he was the final Kazakh grappler from Battle Force to compete here tonight. And the locals definitely appreciated his, uh, his efforts. Let's see how they score this thing. It's a matter of pride at this point for this Battle Force team. You don't want to get shut out. You don't want that clean sweep, 7-0. The judges are taking a long time to deliberate over there at the table. This is no clear-cut victory either way here. Okay, we have a, a result. Referee Rob Eagle brings the athletes to the center of the mats and make this official. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this fight lasts for all three rounds. One by decision of the judges, fighter in their red corner one, Carol Gabriel de Arrucho. There for a moment as to which way that result would we go. We invite the winning teams to enter the arena for the final decision based on the results of the first the mind final one with Please welcome the Golfo team. Clean sweep the team of Golfo here. And uh, you definitely see some frustration on the face of Yesbov in, in defeat there. He came so close, so close to going one back for Battle Force. But advancing through to the final is this team right here, this powerhouse squad. And we're going to throw it over to Michael Sears to interview the winner. Team Madolfo wins by a score of 7 to 0, advances to the finals tomorrow. Here with team captain Giancarlo Bodoni. How do you feel about your team's performance today? I think everybody performed super well. I mean, that was the big goal coming in uh, to try to get a clean sweep, and uh, everybody came through. Dante Leone, you tore it up here at the quarterfinals. You come out today, kicked it off at 76 kilograms with a quick submission. How'd it go for you today? Uh, everything went really well. I say for me it went perfect. It's about setting the tone when you start out. So I've never been the first match out the gate, so I think I did a good job with that. And uh, everybody did their job, kept the momentum rolling, and we came away 7-0. Everybody's healthy, and uh, big one's tomorrow. So time to get in, rest up, and get ready for that one. All right, congratulations to Team Adolfo, team manager Mo Jessim, 
qualifies for the final at the Aiga Champions League tomorrow. It will be the same team except Mika Galvao will be coming in at 83 kilograms. Looking forward to tomorrow. Stay tuned for the second pairing. Goedemorgen well, allemaal van Team Rochelle, de Madres competing for the first place and the title of the best grappling team in the world. We will find this hour very fun. Nice show of sportsmanship and mutual respect from our two teams here in this first, the two semi-finals. Team Adolfo with a clean sweep. All seven matches go to them and three of those by submission, three by points, one judge's decision. That was of course this last match right here. Kawan Gabriel that against was pretty tight. <laughs> at the Kel Diesetov. Back and forth encounter between two young up and coming athletes. And that puts Team Adolfo into the final here tomorrow in the second round against well, we'll find out soon. It's going to be the winners of between Asahi Republic and Universal Fighters. But before we go into that second round, we will have five super fights featuring up-and-coming local Kazakh talent here, Brandon.